What's up everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com here. Currently just doing some testing with the uh, Waste Spark Eliminator. And so I'm just going to film this. I'm outside of the shop and I wanted to get some uh, fresh air. Also wanted to uh, not be so loud and noisy in there um, and keep the exhaust out. So let me show you what I got really quickly. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I've got the gen set out here. Got a little bit of gas in a container, and I've got a little sensor on here. It's a little magnetic hall switch. I've also got the oscilloscope connected to the spark plug cable. I've got all my cables. I've also got a cable connected to the. Uh, um, this is basically the kill switch. This goes to the kill switch, and um, I'm basically just turning on and off a relay on this circuit that I have right here that I built and I'll give this circuit away show you what it does show you how it works but basically it just kills the switch uh, on the engine for every other revolution to get rid of the waste spark I, I didn't want to do this mechanically I wanted to do this um, electrically so I didn't have to modify anything so this was an easy fix for a general solution like this instead of modifying it mechanically now I did create another version of this and I'll show you what I did but I uh, had lots of problems and I'll explain that later so got the oscilloscope hooked up to the trigger um, so I'll see every pulse come around and then I also got the uh, the uh, oscilloscope connected here to the uh, spark plug wire this is designed for it and so I'll get all of the functionality that I need so that's the current setup so I figured while I'm out here doing this I would just uh, go ahead and film what I was doing and see how it runs. So, here we go. Alrighty, so I wanted to show you what the circuit actually looks like. Um, it's pretty simple, straightforward. There's some uh, information here. It just says uh, Waste Spark Eliminator on there. It's got my website, obviously. I did etch this circuit board as well as adding the uh, um, print on the top. Maybe, uh, uh, I've showed you in the past how to do that, but anyway, it runs on a 9 volt battery. Um, so you could hook it up to 12 volt, it's got a 5 volt regulator on it, pretty simple. So the only things that this is hooked up to is this hall sensor right here, which senses the magnet on the flywheel. So this is a magnet, and the pickup coil is right here that actually creates the spark, and how this functions is that um, the coil in here if it's shorted to ground will eliminate the spark coming out of it it cancels out what's happening so the magnet flying past this uh, this coil here actually induces a uh, magnetic field in that core and creates a high voltage spike so if you short that out it doesn't do anything so that's how this actually functions so if it's open it runs 
and when you hit the off button um, and turn the engine off it shorts it out to ground so what I've got here is I've got a connection from ground which is this one connection from ground going up here through this cable to this relay alright simple relay and then back down the cord and back to the spot where the uh, cable goes back to this on off switch so you can still use the on off switch you leave it connected that way so if you want to kill the motor you still can so what happens is every other pulse it just shorts out the coil and that's how I'm eliminating the waste spark very straightforward you don't need to modify this motor at all this is just where the pole start plug is. I took it off to make it easier to start and run and check and test with uh, using a drill to start this thing. Um, so let's look at the circuit. Um, the Hall sensor has uh, three wires. It's a positive, a negative, and then your signal coming back. Now, um, you can see here I have this push button. And uh, if I hit this push button, you can see my input flashes. That's my input. This is my output. So, if we can see both LEDs at once. Every time I push this is one revolution. Every other revolution it turns on and off this relay, which shorts to ground the um, coil and does not allow it to fire on that particular revolution. Um, now this hall sensor is a bit different as in the voltage that comes out of it is a um, if you put in 5 volts you get like 2.5 volts and then it oscillates between 2.5 and below or 2.5 and above depending on the north or the south so what I've got set up here is I've got a comparator an LM339N and I've got that um, comparing a voltage reference using this potentiometer 10k pot and the uh, um, I'll actually set that up here so you can see what's going on with that. So let's do that first. Okay, so my yellow trace is the voltage that the potentiometer is set at. And I'm currently uh, in the blue trace is what the um, hall sensor is reading. So I'm going to show you what happens. You'll see the blue trace go up and surpass the yellow trace. And when that happens, the output will turn on. You can hear it click if you listen. Magnet away, magnet hit, magnet away, magnet hit, so magnet away. So what I'm doing there is I'm just comparing the voltage of the hall sensor and when it gets above the threshold the LM339N puts a positive or negative potential out of its output. So that's how I'm currently detecting the magnet, that's the detector circuit. Alright, so after the LM339N, I am going and putting this into a D flip-flop. The chip number is, um, I'm using a GD4027B. Uh, actually, this is a JK flip-flop. And the, the flip-flop action is creating a divider. So I'm doing nothing but dividing. So you can watch um, that single pulse right there. The yellow again is my output to my um, coil. And the blue little bitty trigger pulse is um, defining the magnet um, on the rotor, on the flywheel. So, so every revolution, okay, every single revolution, I get a pulse. But I'm not doing a good job pulsing this. But every other, every other pulse coming out of the system is divided by two. Okay. So with that being said, what that does is every other time the the um, magnet goes past the hall sensor, it triggers the relay to turn on or off, which in turn shorts out the coil and dissipates the waste spark. It's not needed to spark on the waste spark. Alright, so I currently have the um, trigger scope, or the scope I should say, connected to a capacitance probe that is wrapped around the um, spark plug wire. It's designed for that. And you will actually be able to detect the spark being discharged by a big negative pulse on this yellow um, trace. 
So I'm going to move it up so we can see it. And the blue trace is connected to the input um, going over to the JK flip-flop. So you'll see every single revolution of pulse. So right, right now I have the circuit disconnected and you're going to see every time that the engine goes um, one revolution you're going to see a big spark. Um, or a spike, which is a spark on the spark plug. So let's see what that looks like. Alright, so now if I connect the circuit, what you're going to see is every other pulse on the blue, the yellow will have a spike. Now the yellow does have a small spike, um, but it's not a full spike, and it is not actually sparking, even though you can see it, because it's such a defined signal, it's very sensitive. So watch what happens, you'll see a very deep um, low spike every other time the revolution, the motor makes a re uh, one RPM, one revolution. Alright, I'm going to do that again with a, uh, now i got a bad reflection, with a slightly uh, a slightly different angle here. I'm getting uh can't get rid of the flexion. You're on your own. Let's see what happens. So the big spike going down into the uh, other pulses is where the ignition is happening and then the short small yellow pulses are where it's being shorted out. So you get the idea. So let's take a look at the actual schematic. Alright, so here's the entire schematic and uh, of course I'm going to zoom in and show you what I've got going on here. I've got a standard um, voltage uh, LM7805 and this is just a 5 volt regulator. Now I've included this diode in case you hook the circuit up backwards it doesn't destroy the circuit. This is always a good idea. It's just a standard diode yeah, there's a little voltage drop there, but there's not enough to really make a big difference. And actually, a lot of things use this uh, basic principle. So, I do have a green light connected to a resistor over the 5 volt, so you know that you've got power. So, here is the, uh, the hall sensor is connected here. You've got it connected to a 5 volt signal and a ground, and then your input signal is a number 2 right here. And this goes in here to the uh, LM339N. Um, one of these is just running an LED so that I can see the input pulse and the other one is actually running the signal going to the next portion of this circuit. Now here's the uh, reference potentiometer. Um, I have these um, backwards or flipped so this one is actually the opposite of what this one's put out and I did that because otherwise the LED is always on and flickers off when the pulse hits and I wanted it to be the other way around. So it only comes on when the magnet is in front of the hall sensor. Now I have this push button tied to a resistor going to the signal input and that's tied to uh, the 5 volt positive. The reason I did that was because I want to be able to um, change the um, stroke. So if it was on the wrong stroke, the engine's never going to start. So you push that button once and it flips the, um, the JK flip-flop down here and basically gets on the opposite um, opposite uh, path here so we can actually fire the engine correctly. Um, so you bypass the um, the actual motor being spun and you advance the stroke. Um, so that's pretty simple. Nothing really major there. It's just a voltage comparator. Um, now I have this capacitor and this resistor tied to the line coming out of here because I was having some issues um, and this seemed to clear up the um, randomness that was triggering the um, JK flip-flop when it was not supposed to. So that's pretty simple. So the JK flip-flop is configured in such a way that it just is turning itself into a voltage or a, 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 a frequency divider. So every pulse coming in, it's only triggered or it's only re-triggered um, every other time you see a pulse here. And then so the output is, is divided by two of the input.
pretty simple. Um, you can do the same thing with the with the um, D flip flop, but I had JK flip flops and I was playing with them and they seemed to work okay. Um, so down here I have a uh, this isn't really needed, but I have a uh, a four N thirty five. Um, basically, it's just an opto isolator, and um, I have a isolated power option built into the circuit board. Um, that's just for pure reference um, to try to get rid of any anything that's coming back from the signal and re-triggering it um, on this side. But the relay is also a mechanical way of isolating the voltage, so this isn't necessary. It's just what I built into the to the circuit. Um, so there's a resistor for this LED inside of the um, opto isolator. And then on the other side, I have just a uh, a, a MOSFET, an in-channel MOSFET. I'm currently using a IRFZ46N. IRFZ46N, I'll need to add that to this. Um, but any in-channel MOSFET will work. It's just simply driving a relay. Then I have an LED connected here so that you can see when it's actually on and actually off, the relay that is. And then, you know, you, again, you have another isolation here with voltage. Um, but if you tie the grounds together, you can have issues. So I've designed the board to have an extra um, an extra power um, portion, so that a 5 volt uh, regulator basically, so that you can isolate it, but you don't need to connect it. I've included jumper options to bypass it. But I had a lot of problems with the other circuit, so I wanted to make sure that I had that in there. And um, so the, the, this portion of the circuit literally just shorts the coil to ground. That's all it is. You got a, um, um, a ground coming in and out goes to that, um, to where it connects to your on-off switch. Make sure you connect it to the right side of your on-off switch or it ain't going to work. Um, the relay is very, very small. If you have a big relay, it does not, it does not, um, if you wanted to run a motor past 5,000 RPM, most of the time you don't. This one runs it, I believe, at 3600 to make the correct voltage and frequency that it needs. So this relay is what I'm using. Um, I also have another relay here. Let me show you what they are. So this is the relay that I'm using. Let's see if we can get it to focus. This is the relay that I'm using currently. doesn't look like it's in focus but maybe it is there it goes that's the one I'm using currently and I also found this one in my stash which um, um, should work it's pretty much the exact same thing this is a 5 volt relay they're really small they don't have much mechanical mass and so they move really rapid um, now I did mechanical because um, in order to short out the coil to ground I was having some issues on how I was going to make that work so it just didn't seem to function correctly and I decided a relay mechanical contact um, will work just fine because you know you use points and stuff in a standard motor why not use a relay and it's just shorting it to ground there's not a lot of arcing going on I do not believe so it's not a real big deal um, here is the circuit pretty simple straightforward all the components and stuff are on here um, yeah that's about all. Not really much to look at there, but um, I will include these things on my website, and that's about it. So, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something, and hopefully you can use it in your own uh, in your own work if you'd like to. If you didn't want to do a mechanical change to your motor, then you can do this electrically without ever messing with it. So, it's a good, uh, easy, easy way to do this. All right. Have a good day. Bye bye.